Katie, come up here, would you please, babe? Hallelujah. We were talking before the service here. Pastor's got a microphone there. <clears throat> and we were just talking about hunger and about desperation. And, and she was just saying some things. I said, oh, I want you to share that. Go, go ahead, babe. Um, when we were a few months back, we were in Atlanta and um, doing um, um, a revival. And um, there was a lady who got up to give a testimony, and, and I thought, oh, this is so good. Um, she was talking about, it was a financial testimony, and she said, you know, I just got to this, the point this week where, you know what, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And she said, I, I just decided, God, I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do. And, um, and she was speaking in regards to the offering, and so she gave an offering. I, I don't know what it was, but um, anyway, it was, it was a very... A sacrificial offering for her and um, she had been drive been driving this beat up old car and everything and she said you know I just I just got sick of it you know I just got sick and tired of this that I shouldn't I'm a child of God and I shouldn't be if I'm obedient to God shouldn't be having to drive this thing and so she gave this offering and um, she said it was like within a day or two her former mother-in-law not even her mother-in-law but her former mother-in-law went out and bought her a brand new car Hallelujah. and um, and I thought what an awesome testimony but the thing that I thought was so good is that she she came to the point I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I see so much in the church that there's so many frustrated Christians that never really get to that point mm -hmm. that they, they sort of live this life where they're kind of like half in the world, half in church, and you will be frustrated that yeah. living like that. And um, I know I look at my own life and I am so, so thankful that I came to the point where I just said, God, you know, I was, in, I was in college, I was a sophomore in college, I was partying, I was, you know, had friends doing, you know, what, what a typical person in the world in college does. And, um, and, but I came to this point in my life where I said, God, either you're real or you're not. Mm -hmm. If you're real, I'm going after you with all of my heart. If you're not, at least I found out and I can go back to my lifestyle and party all I want and do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I came to a crossroads in my life and, and I found out that God was real and it totally changed my life. I went on to be filled with the Holy Ghost, go to Bible school and start working for an evangelist and now, you know, married a, a preacher and you know, you know the rest of the story. But so many people, even they, you know, they get saved, but I don't think they ever really come to the point. And that's what we're talking about is getting desperate for God yeah. that, so that things change. Because many times we have things in our life that we want to get rid of, whether it's an addiction, whether it's, you know, you need a healing, you need a breakthrough, you need a, um, you know, a, a change in a, in a relationship, in your marriage or whatever it is, but you will never actually get desperate for God. You'll try everything else but won't seek after God with all of your heart. God says that he is a rewarder. That's but it. without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that comes to him must believe that he is, that he is God, and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I mean, everything that we sang tonight was all about that. God, you're, you're everything. You're all that I need. Yeah. If we really believe that, I mean, do we really seek after God like, like he is that? Come on. The proof of desire is in, per, is in, is in pursuit. Amen. If you really desire something, you will go after it. You will make a way. Say it. You will find a way. I mean, you see it all the time when people, well, they want things in their life. You know, the saying where there's a will, there's a way. You know, they'll, they'll, make a, they'll make a way for it to get something that they want. But many times in the church, I just think it's so sad because there are so many areas of compromise in the church. I mean, I was just, I was just looking at this um, Pentecostal evangel. Um, the other day, and I thought, oh, this is interesting because it's it's talking about you know different areas of of compromise and things in the church. Mm. By the time an American child reaches high school, not finishes high school, reaches high school, he has witnessed thirty three thousand TV murders and two hundred thousand acts of violence. Come on. But do I mean do we ever take a stand? No, I'm not going to allow that kind of stuff in my home. Mm hmm. I mean, I know we, I mean, a while back, you know, we had, you know, friends and different ones that, you know, they, they might go, you know, watch, you know, an R-rated movie or, movie or whatever. Cause, you know, it's just rated R just because, you know, of the violence, not because, you know, whatever else. 
I mean, when, when do you take a stand and say, I'm not going to do things like that? Where's the line? And I'm not up here to preach, you know, don't do this or don't do that. But I'm just saying that you have got to come to a point in your life where you're not going to allow the world's junk in. Amen. And you're going to go after God. And whatever you have to cut off, whatever God says you leave behind, everybody else may be doing that, but you're not to do that. And it's different areas for, for each of us. But, I mean, there, there's got to come a time when things begin to, to fall off, that when you, you see God, and you'll get what you want. You'll yes. get what you need. Amen. Many times, you know, people that, especially if they're dealing with something that, you know, whether it's a, you know, a, a sickness that they've had for a long time, whether it's problems in marriage, whatever it is, a, especially if it's something that's been going on, I think, for a long time, they always, they always want to go, they want to have hours and hours of counseling. And I'm not saying there isn't a place for counseling. At times there is. But many times people, they, they want to talk about their problems. They want you to do something to fix it for them. But if you were to really just get on your face and seek God continually, you'd get what you want. Because he's go. all you need anyway. Amen. He is everything that you need. Amen. And many times we think, well, if I could just, maybe I just need someone to pray for me. And, and you know, maybe I need a deliverance or maybe I need this or maybe I do that. You know what? There may be times when you need that. But I'm telling you that if you're seeking God and going after God with all your heart, he will arrange so that you can get that. He'll Amen. arrange that you're in a he'll service and if someone, yeah, he'll set you up. Amen. If someone needs to pray for you or, you know, um, <laughs> cast something off you or whatever needs to be done. If you go after God with all your heart. Oh, yeah. And so I just want to encourage you. I mean, don't, it, it, in our, our life, in our society, it's just so, I mean, such a tendency for everyone just to live an average life. A nice, comfortable mediocrity is just reigning everywhere. I mean, it's true that the statistics are like, you know, um, 80 per, or 20% of people do 80% of the work. I mean, it's just that, you know, it's just so easy just kind of, you know, and it's like, Sometimes I think it's the way the enemy kind of comes in. He's just, you just sort of kind of get lulled to just, oh, don't cause any waves. Don't let, you know, and you don't want to be called like radical or fanatic or, you know, anything like that. I mean, just, you know, don't just kind of do what, you know, is sort of, you know, just the, the nice kind of expected thing. But you know what? You're not going to have the supernatural <clears throat> results then if that's what you're going to do. Yeah. That's right. And... You know, the real, the breakthrough comes when you press, and I mean, you show me anyone in the Bible who didn't, who pressed through and didn't receive what, what they wanted, what God promised them. I mean, desperate people will do desperate things, but they'll get what they want. They'll get what they need. They'll get the breakthrough. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, come to that point in your life. Yeah. I came to that point in my life. I've been so thankful. That, but I haven't, I haven't backed off. I mean, yes, you know, I may have had times when I've had to stir myself up and say, bless God, you know, because of circumstances or whatever. Maybe I'm not quite as hungry as I used to be, and I've got I've to get back, and I've got to stir that up. I mean, everybody may have times like that. But you can't allow yourself to, you know... Some people, when they first got saved, or they were really on fire, really desperate for God, and they were, you know, they would do anything. And then it's just they allow, you know, life, and they got married and had kids, and now I can't really do what God wants me to do. And then, you know, got this job, and they get a little bit older. Oh, I can't, I just can't serve God like I should. I mean, you know what? We all have different excuses, and some of them are good excuses, but they're still just excuses. Yeah. There is absolutely, if God calls you to do something, there is a way for you to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't have called you to do it. Amen. Amen.